Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Tricky Kid Radio and our viewers on Tricky Kid Television. Joining me this week is from Thrash Titan Legends, Anthrax, Joey Belladonna. Joey, welcome to the show. Why, thank you, sir. You guys are currently supporting an album called For All King. What do you attribute your longevity to, to be able to still be functioning at, at that level for this amount of time? Uh, I just love music a lot that I strive on getting better. I do work at it all the time. I'm real conscious of just elevating my, my vocals and just being in a band that's, you know, I don't want to go out there and not do it well, so I'm always right. trying to get better. For sure. I always strive to do that. And I have a cover band, too, not that I'm plugging or anything. I also do that on the side, and I always, you know, we do four hours of classic yeah. rock. It's still no less shocking of just what an achievement for all kings is, even if it was your first record. Um, Tell me about that process. How did all that come together that made it just so perfect? To me? You know, when, when you write songs, you don't know what you're going to... Sure. You know, I mean, yeah, we, we sit around and spend time with the songs. We don't rush anything out. Right. I mean, that album was done in two different spots of recording, like, you know, say a batch of eight songs, another batch of right. six or eight or whatever, or whatever number. Um, I go in and do the vocals later like I've always done. And, you know, again, for me, by myself, I get to sing by myself. So, right, right. vocally, the last two albums that I've done, Worship and this one, For All Kings, I've had me and Jay Rustin alone doing the vocals. Right. And I can try many, many different things vocally. And music-wise, writing, I just think, you know, just in due time, and there's ideas that just spawn and come come together. I don't, I don't know, it's, I don't say by luck, I just think people are, I think we're capable of doing things musically that's really in a wide range. I think each guy, inspirational, we, we're capable of doing all kinds of things. So we can spread the... Spread that a little you know, bit, right? Spread it out. Right. I, 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 that's all I can think of. I, I think there's well, but really me, nothing different. But let me say this, though. Okay, you look the same. <laughs> yeah. You hear that all the time, I'm sure, right? No, I know. Yeah, yes, you do. I think people are just trying to be nice. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. For that. You look the same. Yeah. In my, you're singing... You're singing better now than you did in the 80s. So my question is, what deal with the devil did you make to be able to, to, I to, to maintain it? I really it? focus. I really try. Yeah. I, I'm, not a, I'm not fear of anything right now. Like back in the day when I first started, I didn't know the music so well. Okay. So vocally, it was really, really a challenge to just find a way to sing over that stuff. Right. Because I like to sing, so I'm not going to yeah. do something aside from all the new styles you hear now. Right. I just uh, just finding a way to f make it comfortable and, and, and legible and, and fun to sing you for know, sure. as much as I can because you realize there's a lot of words in our stuff for and sure our, and the keys and the, the speed it's real hard to sing over that stuff and make it work you know I guess that's kind of what I mean is be able to but it's still no less uh, you know amazing to see anybody be able to maintain that for as long as that you have is there a, a, is there an era of, of anthrax that you feel the most nostalgic mm -hmm. about? Uh, it has to be the first one only. I mean, among, among Living Two, but the first one, I mean, there's nothing like joining a band or at least getting asked to join a band that I've never heard of or heard that music in my right. life and thinking that this is where I need to be. Well, so what, what, what made you do it, though? What was, what was the deciding factor about, about this band? I saw that they were really professional. I liked their whole... Uh, style of what they were trying to do. They seemed like they had it together. It was the first band that I've ever saw for real that was trying to do something on a level that was big like I wanted to do. Right. But most of the stuff I was doing was a lot of just local people just, you know, just banging, banging some, you know, tunes so, out there, but nothing really serious enough where like they could care less if they go far. Did it? Did you find yourself? Did it really push you? Uh, you know, to what you were doing before in terms of like your vocal range and, and, and things like that, and the the actual the mechanics of being in a professional band. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's what it's more so now. Right. I I mean, I'm I'm not worried about what they think as much now because <laughs> right. I, I I do what I do and right. I, and I. But initially, to, it was come, a little. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I was always like being like hounded over like I mean. A lot of the sessions I did were really difficult because mm -hmm. I would, I'd be singing the stuff over and over and over, and it would be the smallest mistake, and it was like, God dang, I, I can't, 
I mean, it'd be almost like if you were in school alone with the teachers. He was always tapping you on the shoulder, telling you, "No, no, that's wrong. No, you right, got it." Right. It's like, can I just do me? Let me try. Now it's so much easier because I don't. Okay, I could try all kinds of cool stuff that they would have never even let go or even had a chance to try. So that could be something that could contribute to the fact is that maybe the reason why you guys are, are, are still making such amazing records is that you're getting you know along better. You, you find a way to work together better and also maybe get along better by, by extension as people, right? Well, that's just me by myself. <laughs> I, I can't uh, attribute to why. Well, I, guess you're I right mean, here. sure. I mean, yeah. whatever I'm singing, if it, if it works good for the band, then that that part that helps. Right. Helps me a lot because I enjoy going in there because I'm not fear of like making a mistake because there's a ton of times that this, the take isn't good because I I sang the wrong word 15 times right right because right. you're just like thinking and all of a sudden kind of overthinking like, right you know, oh yeah you you said the wrong word okay. oh okay no problem but it's not a stressful thing okay good good but I also feel that what I'm doing now is just comfortable versus long ago it was a difficult task because I didn't really I felt good about singing over, but did anyone really want to hear that? Or oh, I was see. I feeling that I was doing anything awesome? I didn't know. Uh, for uh, sure. Until, I mean, until I walked out of spreading disease, I go, wow, that's the way I sound? I didn't even know how I sounded. Right. Like, because I know I sang cover songs and some originals. I was in a band called Bible Black, which never left the house. But we were doing like Black Sabbath. Having and, fun. You right. know, like a hard rock, bluesy kind of music. Right. And that was the guys from Rainbow, which was the Elf Band. Right. And we just did basic rock, so I mean, thrash was tough. Yeah, you know, for I mean, sure, so for sure. It's new. Now, when I talk about nostalgia just, just for a second, was, okay, so kind of my introduction to, to the band Anthrax was, um, like a lot of people, I was about, I was 15 in the late 80s. I was, I'd seen, you know, some videos on, on MTV, and then uh, Among the Living had been out for a little while. Uh, but then the Headbangers Ball Tour came to Dallas. I, I, I grew up here in Dallas and in the Fort Worth area. And me and my friends, we went to go see, you guys were on the State of Euphoria tour at that time. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, historically looking back, I know that favorably you guys haven't really championed that record as much as the other ones because there was some... Uh, you know, Scott kind of goes into his book a little bit about it. Um, kind of talks about how it was a bit rushed, and they kind of wished they'd had a little bit more time. Uh, what What is your take on that? When you When you think back to that era, is that is, when, or when you hear City of Euphoria, when you think about those songs? For me, I have a different pr perspective because for me, it will always be that will always be my Anthrax because that was my introduction to it. But for you, actually being in the band. Do you have this kind of the same negative connotation when you think about that era of Anthrax? I'm not negative towards the album. I just I agree with the rush part of it. You yeah. know, I mean, but a lot of the records I did, I I come in later and I don't know where I come in right. until I get in there and do it. And then at that point, the song is always done in in a format of the writing part of it. Right. So there's no changing anything. So whatever I have to sing over is that. Okay. And, and again, some of the songs are a bit quirky, but when you look back and you listen to them, they're, <laughs> they cool, they're cool tunes. They are. But, you know, whether it's the band's favorite and stuff like that, I think that's one of the bigger questions. And I don't hate the album. I think there's a lot of good songs on I mean, you know. Well, you know, I, uh, I had spoken with, with Charlie uh, not, uh, not long ago, and also Frank, last time you guys were in town, um, that you actually, in spite of, of that feeling that way about it, that you guys are actually going to go back and maybe do a little... You know, I think there's, a, there's an anniversary coming up for it, and instead of ignoring it, it's actually going to be acknowledged. So there's, there's got to be a little something there, you well, know? I, I, you know, hopefully when they put it out, it's something cool, because I don't, I don't know if I have anything other than maybe the couple of cassettes that I did. <laughs> right. I mean, I hope, hope it's something that people enjoy. Um, you talked about cover songs a while ago. How did it feel that the, that the lead track off the record, and it's still the, one of the only ones you guys still play live from... Uh, State of Euphoria is a cover song. Was that ever uh, a challenge for you or, or, or something that you wish could have been, been done differently or, or anything like that? Never heard the song before, so when it came to me, it sounded pretty straight up. It's, it's obviously a little bit more straighter, rock, right. hard, hard rock song. And you guys have changed it over the years. Like last time I saw you guys, you guys even do the kind of the, the you kind of do this big build up in the beginning with it and everything else. Oh and yeah, I, yeah. I don't you, know, really, you gotta add a few things yeah. dynamically and stuff, but I, 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 we don't really take the song and flip it upside down. Like right. We got the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. A, that's a hell of a different version. But I mean, but that is an Anthrax. I know it's a Joe Jackson that's cover, cool. but, but that's was, an Anthrax song I wasn't for even sure. Sure, I'm getting to that song. I mean, when I heard it, I'm like, yeah. I mean, 
cool, but like, what are you going to do with this? It's very rare you can take a song and like just spin really it do upside it. down and do something that really, I go, wow, that sounds good. This is us, you know? Well, let me, let me ask you that thing, because I actually have to have this here. Is it, okay, so Anthrax is one of these bands that are one of the bands who actually look forward to the covers thing. And you guys know that the covers has actually kind of become part of y'all's legacy. So, and just now, well, you guys have this seven-inch box set coming up. You guys are about to do, and and I uh, heard that the two new covers are going to be. There's going to be a White Stripe song, and Kansas's "Carry On My Wayward Son." Now that's just about as diverse as it gets. <laughs> okay, yeah, for me, and that's sure. and that's. I mean, not only just for, for singing, but that's just that's just so fun, you know. And I was just wondering, uh, what is your input on that? I mean, do you get the? Uh, do you, I didn't pick do you, one of them. Or well, what about the, the Anthems EP uh, uh, a few I, years I back? Mean, what I is your contribution up, to that? I mean, I may have to take credit for anything. I just know that we did Jailbreak a while back. Yeah, We yeah. never really released it. I said, why don't we pull that out? I was totally into doing, I, I said, how about TNT? You know, that's a good one. Right. And Journey, me and Charlie were going back and forth. And I go, hey, it'd be cool to do a Journey one day. Just just throwing it out there. Right, like, right, going, right. no, no, no. He goes, yeah, I'm into it. I'm good. And he goes, how about keep on running? And then at that point, I don't know who he talked to and who said yes, who said no. Apparently, they all said yes. So. And I love it. It's such a, it's a great track. You guys yeah. kind of flip that one, too, a little bit. Yeah, right? a little yeah. bit, yeah. And it's funny. I've done many Journeys, but never did that song ever before. So that was cool doing that. And, and also, y'all weren't going to do Captain Obvious. You know what I mean? Like, we're... Wrong. Well, you know what I mean? Like, you weren't going to do the Captain Obvious thing where you're going to oh, go, yeah. oh, we're going to do, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, the, the hit. You're going to do something kind of cool Look at the Cheap Trick. I mean, I, don't, I love Cheap Trick, but that was an odd tune. Yeah. I wasn't really even as familiar with that as I am, like, you know, Guida Zane or, you know, For sure. Surrender. And but it, but, but, but not so obscure where people kind of go, well, I don't know, you were even Cheap Trick song uh, fans don't know it, but it's, 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 still, oh, it's, cool. it's, it's still a cool... The idea of just doing yeah. something that someone else recorded, the same with the, uh, the White Stripes. I don't know anything about that band, really. I've heard a couple of things randomly. Right. But vocally, that doesn't really offer me a whole lot. I mean, I, tr I, I even tried to sing over it. And well, I, I, I haven't heard it yet, so I'm well, excited to hear it. Yeah, so. it, you know, I, I just... I mean, Kansas, I mean, I love Kansas. I've, I've, I've done many covers of bands, but Kansas I love a lot, but I've never was in bands that did Kansas. Right. So to do a Kansas song was awesome, man. So I've, well, you probably grew up with, with Kansas. Oh, so you, yeah, she, of course, love, you had that, had that album, I right? Love, you know? Yeah, come on, I got it all. I got, everything. <laughs> I got live stuff, bootlegs, uh, everything, I demos. Well, let me, let me try to tie something together here. Okay, so you mentioned Jailbreak earlier, okay? So now... I, a few years ago, right when you guys when you rejoined the band, mm -hmm. uh, and you guys were kind of doing those those big four shows, I thought it was kind of cool that you did one of the John Bush tracks. You did only. Oh, and now, when they came to you with that, now what I was going to ask was, was it? It's not acrimonious, right? I mean, like it's not like asking like David Lee Roth to sing a, a Sammy Hagar song. I mean, do you have any kind of do you have any trepidations about that at all? Personally, I I thought we had enough music. Yeah. I was just trying to be a champ and, and try something, you know? Right. Because for some reason, when you got that rivalry crap that went on, it just bugged the shit out of me. Because yeah. I don't want, I don't have nothing against him. Right. I don't have nothing against them. I mean, I can sit around and have a grudge all day. For sure. I just didn't want to try to, it's hard enough when you do covers. Right. But yet do something with the singer in the old band. And right. Tried. He had it rough because, I mean, for the sake that he had, almost had to do, Old right, songs, right. because then they would really be fighting, fighting a good fight there. You for know? sure. So for me, I didn't want to really get too involved with doing that. I just, I didn't want to keep opening that door and try. Right. What was I trying to prove? Uh, I'm glad I don't have to, because I just don't really feel like it. Honestly. Right. I, I could. I mean, I'm sure. I always tell people nothing against those songs. Forget you ever heard them. Right. I could have done any of those records. I think they would have been cool. Yeah. Well. Don't know. We don't know because I never did them before. Uh, right. Other, other than that, so. <laughs> but I, I wanted to commend you though, and here's and here's why. Because like you just said a while ago, David Lee Roth doesn't have to sing Sammy Hagar songs, but Sammy Hagar absolutely would have to sing. Yeah, he had to do it. He had he to didn't do it. Necessarily, he could have said no. Well, but like you but, said, but imagine the battle. They do very few. Uh, right. And also, maybe it's not his style. So. For sure, but but what I mean is, is that, but you did it, and you did it very, uh, you know, humbly, and you did it so well. And not to mention, 
uh, again, no offense against John Bush. Yeah. I love all those records too, but after I heard you sing only, I couldn't help but think, man, what would that whole record have sound, uh, sound I, like? I, with that, Joey? That, that'll always haunt me, the, the <laughs> right. fact that those 13 years went away and, and they're gone. Well, but they're I mean, but, but at the same time, I think though, isn't there some type of, I don't know, I guess, uh, what we're looking for? Maybe I there, just feel good about it now, right? You know, yeah, right, after right, it's right. all said and done, <laughs> with all the crap that you, I mean, I can add to this, but at the end of the day, it's all good. You know? It is all good, but there's got to be some kind of comfort for you because if you guys were doing it, like I said, at a much lower capacity, yeah, and, like, oh, they brought the other and, guy back. Mm-hmm. And you were kind of looking kind of like unrecognizable, but the fact is that you're the guy that I saw at the Steady Euphoria tour when I was 15. It's it's unbelievable. And so, I mean, that's... I've always been I, that guy. I, I mean, <laughs> even earlier on in the days, I could have been that guy in you know, 92 <laughs> and 5 and whatever. But no, that's cool. I'm glad. I'm really glad for the fans, too. I mean, not even myself. I'm proud. But I also love that people are enjoying it. And then all these new people coming up and yeah. get to see what was there before almost to the point where it's almost that as an entirety. Well, well, at the same time, you know, I, I don't think I've ever read this, and but I'll, I'm going to say it, is it, it has to be something about you being back in the band that is also kind of have solidified because you, you don't just make records like worship music. You don't just make records like, you know, For All Kings just because you feel like it there's got to be something there right, and, and yeah, I, there's got to be an ability and there has to be a, a, a an urge to be able to do it and there's a, that's what i'm there's saying everything yeah so I, you being back in the band it just felt like again nothing against anybody else it was just kind of like that thing you're never going to get back we got it back at what level and at this level so i mean it's it, well, as a musician I'm, I'm very proud of that i yeah. I, I dig that even extremely more than anything because I don't want to go out there and not be able right. to either sing these songs or even want to be in the band or like the people. All that stuff is cool. Yeah, you know? right. and I always look for the, my favorite word is let's be fair. Yeah, right. Let's try to do this together and, 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 and honor each other's abilities. I'm happy to be next to Scott. I love that Charlie's been and Frankie's been on my yeah, side. Yeah. And of course, John's doing a great job. So it's really good to have a good band and, and be happy about that. For part, sure. You know? Now, uh, you guys did, of course, were part of the part of the you know the big four shows and all that. What, what were uh, when you heard you guys were going to be doing that? What were what were your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, it's an honor. The, the Metallica wanted to even put that together, and I, I I don't even use the number one, two, three, four band because I don't know what that is. I just know that they picked us right as, as a bands to play on that tour. Thank you for that, and. For some reason, I think that might have also helped me get back in a band because I think I was one of the first, I mean, I, I don't even know how true it is, but somehow I got asked to do that because I would have been suitable to be that guy versus maybe the other lineup. I don't know if you think I about know, it. Not, I didn't know that. Well, there's no quote there. Okay, I got just, you. I got I'm you. just saying, so if you think We're all about friends it, here. Someone like, hmm, let's ask that dude right, if right. he would be a part of it. Maybe. I wish I knew the story about that, but that whole tour whatever the little, or should I say, the shows that we did were phenomenal, you know? For sure. Yeah. Well, one of, one of my favorite memories uh, also was, like I said, after the City of Foria tour, which is a few years later, uh, opening night for Clash of the Titans. Killer, man. Was here in Dallas. Awesome. Now, keep in mind, I mean, I'm, I'm in high school. I remember um, the I'm, Dallas show. Yeah. So I was, was going to ask you, what, what were your memories about, you know, opening night, coming to Dallas to be part of that Clash of the Titans? Again, you know, you're in a band that's got a, a tour that's coming up. Any tour that you have that's really six, looks like it's going to be some really great, you yeah. know, entourage of, of successful bands right. and, and fans that can't wait to see it. it. Was just exciting, you know. And look at Alice Change, yeah, yeah, you know, up and coming. Nobody knows, and then look at what they've done. And, and just think of it on those terms. And For what sure, happened over the years, but yeah, I love you know Slayer and Megadeth. We're always playing together, and we still will. You know? And it's one of those things where whether you like it or not, though, right? You know no, what I mean? It. It, Why it, not? It yeah. fits, right? I right. mean, it's part of the. It's part of the. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that theme, you know. For sure, it goes hand in hand. Uh, you know, and I know those shows were probably uh, pretty trying. I, uh, uh, you know, one thing that was great for me was that. You know, I know when it came to America, there were two shows on both coasts. I was at both shows. Um, I was at actually uh, standing not far from, I was right on side stage when you guys did the show at Yankee Stadium. 
And I had to have been near some family members of, of you guys because there were some very emotional people near me for that mm-hmm. day. Uh, you know, and of course the mayor declaring it, you know, Anthrax Day in the Bronx and all oh, that, awesome. you know. I was to that today, somebody. And uh, I was sitting right there when you guys were, were changing into the pinstripes and, and all that kind of stuff. That was, a, that was a, you know, for me, this is a, somebody that's followed the band since I was in, in middle school. But it was such a proud moment for me just to see how proud you guys were, you know, all being from that, you know, you know to, to play Yankee Stadium as New Yorkers, man. That's, you know. That was so quick, too. That day flew by. It's one of those things that you almost almost can't enjoy yeah. until later, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but tell me what your memories were about that day taking the stage at Yankee Stadium. I mean, to be asked to play in that place, you know, there's, there's not, there's, just don't have shows in there. Right, you know? right. So anybody that gets to go in Yankee Stadium for whatever it's worth, maybe no baseball you've ever been there before. So I get to go to Yankee Stadium and watch a concert. Yeah. And yeah. yeah these guys, I felt good for those guys because, I mean, they're huge Yankee fans. Well, and, yeah, and to be there. And well, you also you equate Anthrax is one of those bands where it's not a band that you don't know where they're from. Yeah, right. Sure, <laughs> you so know, that, and it's that simultaneous. Time. I mean, I'm upstate New York, so but I felt you're like New Yorker, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it was super exciting, man. It really was. But, but again, that was just when I, you know, being able to be in that perspective, like being that close and proximity and being surrounded by y'all's family and seeing y'all take the stage. What a, what a, what a great proud awesome, moment. Man. You know, it was such a, such a good day that day. You know, uh, I was still living in, I lived in Brooklyn for about eight years. Oh, and wow. so I was, uh, uh, you know, I'm from here, but I moved there for a while. So that was, uh, it was just a neat thing just to take the subway to the Bronx to see Anthrax. Tough man. get in. I know people <laughs> had a tough time getting in there because a lot of, you know, Get yeah. downs and stuff. I know my friends had a lot of time, hard time getting in. Well, thankfully, I was able to bypass. I heard that, too. Thankfully, I was able to bypass all of that. But, yeah, uh, sure. um, you know, a couple more things I, I wanted to add. So I know you're famously for being a big fan of the song Medusa. But besides that, what, 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 are, what are some of your songs you guys haven't played in a while that you like, you'd like to hear? I don't know, you know. It's hard to say. Uh, you know, the cat we used to do, I'm in a dangerous line ago. That, that would be a, a shocker. Yeah, we've been doing AIR. That's a cool one. Um, I'm picking State of Euphoria, really. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, I don't know. You know, we 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 spread it around pretty good. You know, but think I, about how high Armed and Dangerous is. Thirty years, yeah, thirty years for later, it. man. I'll be up for it, man. Yes. I'll be up for it. I, you know, we uh, we've That's been so badass, dude. You know. <laughs> I love hearing, I love hearing it from you, man. Yeah. Well, look at. We do those cover songs. We do them with a straight 440. You know, those are in the right keys. You know. Well, uh, well, well, Joey. Again, like I said, I want to thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, uh, it's been a been a been a, a big pleasure. Like I said, for for me, like I said, that 15 year old kid at that uh, Headbangers Ball show. That was, uh, you know, to to be here today, heavy with you today, man. So right thank now, you so man, much. You thank you. And again, thanks for all of you listening out there, and thanks for watching Tricky Kid TV. We'll see you next week.